Hi guys, welcome to Jen's World about watercolour. Today I'm doing a portrait of a little ring-tailed rock wallaby. Um, they're cute little guys. They're the largest of our rock wallabies. They're smaller than our kangaroos, but largest of our wallabies. Um, they like to live on rocky outcrops and, yeah, they quite agile little things. They get around quite easily. Anyway, so I'm, at the moment I'm using my Faber-Castell... 0.5 mechanical pencil um, yeah drawing in his back legs that they they're quite strong little things they use their legs and their tails to bound around on the rocks this guy's eating at the moment so he's bent over um, and they've got quite long tails that they use to balance and counterbalance themselves when they're moving around um, they can get to about a meter tall 1.3 meters tall and they weigh up to about 12 kilos so yeah so these guys yeah, I think I might have said they're the largest of the rock wallabies. Um, they're grey and white with um, golden coloured feet and arms. Um, they've got dark rings around their tail, hence the ring-tailed rock wallaby. Um, yeah, they live to around 12 years old and they're, veg they're herbivores, so they eat grass, veggies, bark, twigs, fruit and hay, that kind of thing. Um, they live around Australia. They live in the south uh, parts of South Australia, New South Wales, Queensland places like that um, and when they have their babies they have joeys so they have them in their pouch just like a kangaroo um, they carry them around for six to seven months or so and then when they go off and graze the mum will leave the leave the bub or little joey in a rocky outcrop and, and go and get food and then come back and little bub will come back and have a drink from mum so yeah so anyway so I'm going into him I've done the base coat of him with a little bit of raw sienna and now I'm going in with a mix of burnt umber and ultramarine blue just to make the greyish colour over the top um, so yeah give them a bit of depth they've got quite a little light underbelly so I've, I'm leaving his little white underbelly um, I might add a bit of or I will add a bit of a, a shadow on it later but just a bit of a blue or a bit of a yellow ochre so I'm adding a bit of yellow ochre now onto his arms because he does have quite golden little arms and his legs um, and I've actually gone over a little bit of his white spot there. He's got a spot on his back leg that I've accidentally gone onto, but I can fix that up later. So, yeah, putting a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of red mixed in onto his legs and onto his tail, which I'm doing now. And as you can hear, I've got Pippi bouncing around on the floor. She's making snorkely noises, so I apologise for that. <laughs> so anyway, so I'm adding details around his ears now. I'm adding a bit of, bit of darker mix, a thicker mix of burnt umber and ultramarine blue just around his ears and his back and adding a bit of fur texture around his back and towards his back end. And now I'm adding a little bit around his shoulder. Um, and down to his elbow. So yeah, and I'm using my silver black velvet um, size six brush. Mainly, I use a size eight as well for the for the washes on his body. Um, yeah, so now I'm adding a little bit of colour to his forearms and his tail, and I'm going to add some stripes in a second because he's got the stripes or the rings around his tail. Um, so I'm still working, yeah, working on his fur texture now. Um, yeah, so a little bit of fur around his neck, just darkening up around his ears, give him a bit of definition. And now mixing up some more paint to be able to a bit of a thicker consistency just for under his tail for a bit of the shadow. And I'm again going in with a little bit of Indian red and a little bit of yellow ochre. And now I've added a little bit of burnt umber and I'm doing that onto the stripes of his tail and into the warm parts of his leg. So just on the underneath of his leg and around his arms just to give him a bit more definition because they are quite golden around their arms. And I'm using Sennelia watercolours for this. Um, yeah, I love my Sennelias. They've got a beautiful glow to them and you can layer them and so I can do lots and lots of different layers and you don't lift up the bottom layers when you when you add it on and yeah it really does give them a really lovely glow really nice natural look um, 
just yeah, yeah it's just got a different look to it than than I get from other watercolors so yeah so I'm going back in and adding a bit more definition to his fur so just touching around really adding little dark bits just around his his thigh there yep so around his cheek adding a little bit there And yeah, doing a little bit more definition around his face. All right, I've gone back into his tail now with a little bit of raw sienna, just to darken up or to richen up around the fur on his tail. Mixing a bit more color here. Yep, just a little bit more just for his tail, just to darken up right underneath. So that looks starting to look good now. They're quite simple to paint, they don't take too long. Um, I think this all in all, I've got it sped up a little bit for this video, but it took me about 20 minutes to paint this little guy. So and I had really enjoyed painting him. I love doing our little wallabies and our kangaroos. I'm lucky enough to have these little guys, well not these little guys, but I have kangaroos living out the back. So we're on a, a bit of a farm here in Victoria, in Melbourne. So um, yeah, we're lucky enough to have kangaroos in the back paddock. So quite often they'll come up to the house and so I get to watch them graze and see them most days actually. So yeah, I've seen these little guys at zoos and places like that, um, but they're quite, they tend to spend a lot of their time up in the hills in the rocks and they don't, you know, they don't mix with humans very much, not like our kangaroos do, that tend to come down into our communities and be around us a lot more. Um, yeah, these little guys are quite shy and they tend to stay up in the rocky outcrops and in the hills and, yeah, where they're nice and safe and protected. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I've just added a little bit of highlight and highlight, a bit of bluey shadow around his tummy on his white bits. So I've used a bit of cerulean blue there um, just to, to give, so he's just got a little bit of colour on his belly, a little bit of shadow. Um, now I'm just doing the finishing touches and just touching up around his tail around the underneath of his tail and I think I'll I'm about to go in and um, do some grass in a minute give him so he looks like he's eating something rather than just floating around <laughs> chewing on air <laughs> so yeah but um, oh yeah I'm adding a bit more oh, a bit of a bit of a blib of water there so I've got to bop that up a bit and um, yeah just darkening up all the little fine bits around his belly, around the light of his belly, a little bit around his rump to give the legs some definition. A little bit strengthening around the tail, the back of the neck. And they, yeah, they have a little white stripe on their cheek which I've tried to leave as a natural white paper. So yeah, I think he's coming up pretty good. I oh, added a little bit of white gouache I've, where I've knocked a few highlights accidentally. I've popped a little bit of white gouache in there. I've used, I have it in my Sennelia pan. I've got a actually every every type of watercolor paint I have, I pop a bit of white gouache in a in a half pan. So I've got that handy. So yeah, now I'm adding a little bit of grass for him, and we're just about done. So yeah, I'm doing using sap green and. A little bit of yellow ochre in with that just and a bit of burnt umber a little bit with, with green it sort of just darkens it up to more of a natural color green for here in Australia we don't have a bright green we usually have a browny sort of a green um, so yes yeah, so I usually put a bit of brown into my greens or I mix my greens with a bit of yellow ochre and a bit of ultramarine and that makes a, a really nice sort of a green for here um, yeah so and then I've made a little tiny bit of a darker mix just to give it a bit of texture. And yeah, just finishing off with defining his eye a little bit. And now I'm popping my signature on. And we're done. So thank you for watching and sharing this video with me. If you wanted to, if you'd like to subscribe, um, click on the bell icon or give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'd love to have you follow along with me. I'm thoroughly enjoying doing this and yeah, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks again. Bye.